Now, back to the Morning Roast with Bonte and Shasky. Raw Father 1978. I have not seen the Wiz. I admit, I have not seen the Wiz. Turn it down. This is such a great wedding song. Banger. I miss. We got some weddings coming up. There was like a period where I was fatigued with weddings because, you know, you hit like your mid to late 20s and through your 30s. It feels like every couple of weeks is a, especially from spring to summer, is like a, a wedding. And now they're coming back around because all my younger cousins and stuff are are starting to get married. And I'm ready for wedding season this year. I'm not. I'm a, Speaking I, of that, uh, yeah, an I engagement, Stephen Stephen Langford confirmed, confirmed, by the way. Nice guy, he is confirmed, and we can speak about thank it in you. public, uh, yes. Thank you. So it's thank okay, but Shasky didn't bust him out. No, I didn't. He came up to me, and he said, we got engaged. He didn't even say that to me. I talked to him for like 10 minutes. You're not as friends as, with him as well, I am. Oh, I went on this podcast. I did a, you did. I did a pod with the guy and yeah. you didn't even tell me. Yeah, exactly. I was his first guest on the pod. No. First ever guest. Well, that was years Have ago. Have you been on the pod? No. Uh, I'm also not the king. I'm not the king either. I'm definitely not the king. The king is Dave Fleming. The king is Dave Fleming. And it's been a while since we talked to him. Uh, I mean, Dave Fleming's doing his thing. Giants are hot right now. PJ Championship was really good. I mean, everything's going on for Dave Flip. Flip, how you doing, man? D- let me ask you, Flip, before you even get started. Yeah. Diana Ross, big fan, right? Diana Ross? Yeah. Heck yeah. Are yeah, you kidding I, me? Well, well, you know, you know, Flip, I I'm I'm a little my swagger's gone right now because I couldn't name a Diana Ross song, and it was an obvious song, and I feel like I let a lot of people down by not knowing the Motown great and Diana Ross. So I'm a little down right now. I need you to pick me up, buddy. I need you to pick me up bad, Flip. Now, now wait a minute. You could not name a single Diana Ross song? I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not good Get when him, it comes Dave. to titles of songs, Dave. No, I'm you're just not, not good, good at music. Yeah, yeah well, that's why I work as I mean, there there ain't no mountain high enough, oh, my and God. there ain't no valley low enough. Oh. Come on, man. One of the greatest duets of all time. Thank you. I literally uh, said that with, and Remember the Titans? With his jaw dropped. Yeah, I was like, Titans, what? Oh, uh, yeah. I, oh I'm just not good at naming songs, Slim. I, it's, a, it's a flaw in my game. I got a big hole in my game. <laughs> There's only about 30 that are recognizable to anybody who's ever lived in this country. Oh, I love you so much. Uh, we, we forgive you. I, I was just listening to, while I was waiting for you guys to call, I'm sitting here in my hotel room having a little cup of coffee before uh-huh. I... Head to the head to the ballpark. I was listening to Stevie Wonder this morning. I love it. See, see, man, Hotter that's... than the Fourth of July. Man. They don't know about that. <laughs> exactly. The talking book, great album. Oh, oh so good. good, Stevie. Yeah, so good, Stevie. When I hear Stevie and I'm blasting it when it's like a hot day, there it's just it for the soul, Dave. You know what I mean? Like there's just something about the soul. You just feel refreshed. Well, they don't make music like that anymore. No. I agree with that. They they don't. They, uh, it was the 50th anniversary of that album this year, and uh, he was a true pioneer. He's still around. He's still making music. I know. It still sounds great. I love I, it. I, I do love the Shaq story with Stevie Wonder. He said he's not applying. I don't know. We're elevator. not going down there. It's TV. I'm sure you've I heard that story, Flip. I know. Up. Dave, <laughs> but I want to get into this, because now that we're bringing up music that makes us feel good, when they brought up Casey Schmidt, and I'm sure it's more, there's more to it than just this, but like they bring up Casey Schmidt, and obviously there was all of this, you know, spark during uh, spring training where you could see some of the flashes. He goes to AAA and, and continues to excel. They bring him up, and clearly the hands are elite. The bat is, I mean, he's spraying the ball all over the place, two strikes, you know, jumping on the first pitch. I mean, doing a little bit of everything. It just feels like the entire tenor of the organization got uplifted. And my making too much of the Casey Schmidt call up? Well, I don't think you are. I mean, I do think that he provided more than just the and now the on-field production's been great. Unreal. More than just that. It's more than just that. He did give everybody a true jolt of energy. I think you mentioned the defense and look, his hitting has been insane so far. It's not going to stay that way. We're already seeing that like mm-hmm. that a couple quiet games. He has some stuff to work on offensively. He, they, the Giants want him to be an aggressive hitter, so they're not trying to get him to change his style. But in the big leagues, if you swing at everything, that's not going to work long term. So <laughs> yeah. we're already seeing that adjustment. Like he's going to have to learn here, and there are going to be some ups and downs since we're talking Diana Ross. I mean, there will be <laughs> there will be some peaks and valleys with Casey's offense. What will never deviate is his defensive ability. And the Giants have become a much better defensive team with him around. And frankly, you know, it sure looks like it's only been a few games, but Pat Bailey oh. sure looks like he's he's 
the real deal defensively too. So I, I think, you know, it's a combination of you get that sort of uh, intangible stuff when a rookie comes up and does well and uh, lifts everybody up and there's smiles in mm-hmm. the clubhouse and everybody's bouncing around. And then also just pure, the Giants have, have played great defense over this stretch. It's helped their starters. It's helped their bullpen. And they're playing the best ball they've had all year. And, and I want to further that up um, because the defense, to me, going into the year, it's like, ah, you lose Brandon Belt. First base is going to be an adventure. No, Lamont Wade has been a pleasant surprise, and, and I'm really impressed by him. Oh, well, they're not going to be able to shift. So, you know, what's the defense going to look like? No, Estrada's taking big strides forward, and Casey Schmidt, J.D. Davis look legit. And then behind the dish, ah, Sable and Bart, you know, they're struggling a little. You bring up Bailey. Wow, it's shored that up defensively i was really pessimistic they've been really good defensively the last three weeks they have they deserve some credit for that for for addressing some of those weaknesses and having confidence that guys like david and davis and wade could get better and lamont in particular you know jd we talked a lot about him we haven't talked as much about lamont like his defense over at first base right now the giants are second in the big leagues in defensive runs saved from the right side of the infield. So second and first together, mm. there's only one team that's done it better, according to that metric at least, than the Giants. Wow. And when you got a staff that is throwing a bunch of ground balls like the Giants are, it's huge. It makes a massive difference. Uh, the play Brett Wisely made the other day, last uh, not last night, but the night before, at second, we haven't seen a Giants second baseman, I don't think, in a long time mm-hmm. make a play mm-hmm. like that. He made it look easy. Joey mm-hmm. Gallo had a hit, period, and he took it away. Uh, so there's more athleticism out there on the field. Uh, they're working hard individually, hard to get better. Tyro has gotten a lot better. The outfield defense has gotten better. Mm. Now, is it elite yet? It's probably not elite, but Hanniger and Conforto are big upgrades, and Yaz has done a fine job when he's been healthy out there in center field. Dave Fleming here on the morning roast on 95 7 the game, the voice of the San Francisco Giants as they get ready to play the Twins again today. Uh, they battled yesterday. I thought Alex Cobb was really good. Look, mm. we'll get into the hitting and Conforto and uh, Mitch Hanniger in a second here, Flem, because I do believe the Giants will hit all season. But this pitching is going to come down to them. And Alex Cobb, Capper showing the faith in him, giving him the ball in the seventh inning. He goes seven. That was huge. But what about Camilo Duvall? I think he's becoming one of the premier closers in all of baseball. Ten saves this month. Camillo right now is dealing, man. I can't get enough of the guy in the back end of the uh, bullpen, Flem. Yeah, 10 saves of their 13 wins in May. He saved 10 of them. Now, that that's good and bad. Like, it's good. He's doing the job. The Giants are already worried about his workload. Like, they're going to back off a little bit here and maybe not push him quite as hard. And I think the reason why is what you saw last night. They gave him the full day off the day before, and he was – awesome last mm-hmm. night like his stuff was so good mm-hmm. if they could get that guy every time they truly would have if not the best reliever in the game certainly one of the three or four if they could get now to camilo's credit when he hasn't had that stuff this month he's still gotten through it mm-hmm. and that is to his credit like he is learning how to manage a game where things aren't going well you we all, have all watched him the last few years and you can even remember back in the magical year of 2021 when he first came up. I mean, there were some games where it started to get wacky, and uh, and especially last year, a few got away from him where he just couldn't quite slow it down. And I think he's done an excellent job of that, but just the pure, massive stuff. And I gave Bailey credit on the telecast last night for handling him. They can't be a tougher guy to catch right now than Camilo. The way it's moving, how hard it is. Uh, you know, every once in a while you get a scud, uh, an old mm-hmm. Affeld scud, and he made a huge block last night. He was totally calm and comfortable. Two of them work together really well. Yeah, second in the big leagues right now with 13 saves. Uh, he's really pitching well, 1.99 ERA, 34 strikeouts of the season, and a whip just at 1.01. But let's go to Cobb here because Logan Webb is starting to pick it up, and hopefully his back is okay. It sounds like his back is okay, and he could possibly make that start tomorrow. But Alex Cobb quietly has been solid with this boy. And, like, maybe the Giants may need to add another pitcher if they want to go play in October. Well, not. But Alex Cobb, I thought yesterday, giving up those runs early, a bomb to Byron Buxton, a bomb to Michael Taylor, and then he just settles down. And, you know, it's like, oh, wow, Alex Cobb gave a seven. What a reclamation project he's been for the Giants. 
Yeah, he's had two great years now, and I feel great for him. He's a good dude. He's gone under the radar for most of his career. Last night, the thing that was impressive to me last night was he still is fighting that splitter. Like, this is two starts in a row. The splitter's been arguably one of the best pitches of any pitcher in the big leagues this year. Two starts in a row, he has not had the real feel for it. He started to get it back, I think, late last night, but he hasn't had the total feel for it, and he proved he can still go out there and pitch effectively without one of his main weapons. And not that we needed to see that, because we know the guy's a veteran and and can figure it out on the fly, but uh, it's a little precarious right now. The Giants had all this starting pitching depth and all these, you know, so how can they fit all these starters? And because of the struggles of a few of them, uh, right now they have three guys that they're riding hard, Di Scalfani, Cobb, and Webb. They're just giving them the ball and letting them go as deep into these games as they possibly can. And then they have two spots every turn through the rotation where they're mixing and matching. And that does get tough if those top guys don't deliver, and that's why the performance of, of all three of those has been so critical to the Giants' success. You know, you're, you're talking about that splitter, and I, I find it interesting because, like, I'm watching Camilo Duvall, and I don't know if the broadcast is accurate with this. Sometimes it's identified as, like, a sinker. Sometimes it's cutter. Like, uh, what are, what is the Duvall pitch in particular? Like, what exactly is he throwing at a 101 with all that movement? What is that pitch? Yeah, that is the cutter. Now, he had the sinker's been the pitch that we knew he threw. He, he threw the sinker all coming up from the time he was a kid. Okay. Uh, so he was, ba- he was basically sinker slider. And the cutter is in the last year, going back to last year, uh, but now continuing to this year. And the cutter is the one that's the super high velocity. So the triple gotcha. digits pitch is almost always going to be the cutter. The sinker is like 97, 98, <laughs> 99, which is obviously huge velocity for a sinker. But the cutter is the triple digits pitch, and it, it's a different movement. It's a different velocity, and it, it truly is. It is a different look for those hitters. So... It's made him a better pitcher to have that. Yeah. I know it is a little confusing with him, but it is a different pitch. No, no, because I, I find this interesting. I think this is kind of like the hidden stuff that I love. Like part of Roger Craig and what made him so great was he would teach guys the splitter, and it gives guys a new lease on life. We saw it with Gosman coming here, splitter, and he was incredible, and he got a big deal. And obviously Logan Webb and his changeup, he's trying to teach it to other people. And who's the pitching guru that's kind of teaching some of these grips to these guys? Because Dee Sclafani, he's, he's riding himself as well. I think that's been one of the quiet, pleasant surprises of this early season. He looks really good right now. Yeah. And when next time you have Logan on, like let's say you have Logan on your show some morning, next time you have him on, ask him because he's really interesting to talk to about this pitch shape and grip stuff. Huh. And he, you know, he's sort of now fluent in the language of pitch analytics. And I mean, he really talks about the way that these pitchers and the Giants coaches work together to try to shape each pitch perfectly for each individual pitcher and their arm slot and their repertoire. And it just so happens that East Lafani, Cobb and Webb have a lot of similarities. Yep. So the three of them, I think often are, they're often playing off each other in terms of working on, you know, they want a certain type of spin, not the, sometimes you hear the word gyro spin, like the, the more downward spin of a slider. These guys want the more, there's another term for it, the, the, you know, it's not a sweeper, but they want a the more horizontal break of the slider. And so I think a lot of people deserve credit. I mean, obviously, the, to the two Giants pitching coaches that are here, uh, Andrew Bailey, J.P. Martinez, but Brian Bannister behind the scenes, mm. uh, you know, is a really important part of the Giants pitching program. And Brian, uh, you know, we don't see him a lot. We almost never hear from him. He's around a lot. And those guys really lean hard on him. He was a you know, in his big league career, he got, I don't know how many years he got out of not great stuff. Like, Brian never had premium big league quality stuff. And he probably pitched five, six, seven major league seasons. He was a true sort of pioneer in this world as a player. And now he's kind of the Giants pitching coordinator at all levels. And he's one of the guys who's really doing a lot of this work. Dave Fleming here on the Morning Ross on 95, 7 the game. She joins us every single week. Here on the Russell, we'll continue to do it now, especially now that the Warriors season is over. Um, looking at the batters here, and look, I believe the Giants are going to hit all season long. Um, that was my thing coming mm-hmm. into the season. They will hit. 
what will they get from the pitching. But now you got some guys who are back in the lineup and guys are getting hot. And I'm looking at two guys who just came over, Michael Conforto and Mitch Hanniger. It feels like Hanniger's starting to turn a corner, but boy, Conforto is bringing the power, 10 home runs. I know the average isn't there, but his presence in the middle of that lineup is starting to get better and better and better. Actually, he's batting 200 in the last seven days, I should say, Flem. But he's getting better and better in that power department. I like where Henniger and uh, Conforto are on. It, give, it gives the Giants a big, nice presence, power presence in the middle of that lineup. Yeah, me too. I like it too. Now, it could be that with Hanniger, the physical stuff, you know, I think the Giants really envision Mitch as like an everyday, true everyday mm-hmm. guy. Uh, one of the bonuses of Blake Sable and the way he's performed is, I think it gives the Giants a little wiggle room to maybe – say Hanager is like a five-day-a-week player as opposed to a seven-day-a-week player. Because you can see the difference when he's in there. And I think that, you know, they're kind of trying to learn their new personnel. How much can we push these guys? And I think with Hanager, they they are learning that, gosh, he's so good. Let's try our best to keep him on the field mm-hmm. and not over which is a good idea with everybody. But I think with Hanager in particular, the luxury of Sable is I think they're going to be able to preserve him and keep him as healthy as possible. Conforto is a guy who I think can take everyday reps, and part of that is his background. I mean, you guys probably know this, but Michael's dad was a linebacker at Penn State, and Michael grew up playing football, and when you see his body, he was much more of a football player as a kid than a baseball player, and when you see his body, that lower half, like his power comes from incredibly powerful linebacker-style legs, and... Gosh, the power looks easy, doesn't it? Last night he hits a fly ball, and it just keeps going because the guy has just a massive ability to compress the ball and impact it. And uh, I like that. I mean, I like I like when the Giants, you know, the team name is the Giants. I like when the Giants have big, strong suits. <laughs> and Conforto is one of those guys. Like, he fits the bill of what a Gi- the franchise of, from Mel Ott through Barry Bonds and Willie Mays and Willie McCovey. Kevin Mitchell. I mean, we, you know, we, we've missed those guys. Yep. We've missed some true home run power. And the Giants have had a lot of home, you know, they set an all-time franchise record two years ago, but without an anchor mm. in the middle of the lineup. Conforto can be that guy. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm really liking what I'm seeing. It's obvious that he has the skills. It's just he missed so much time, and so to see him kind of put it together, it's been a lot of fun. You know, Dave, you live, eat, breathe this thing, 365, when it comes to the Giants, and so you probably have a better feel for this. It just feels like, in terms of fan perception and, you know, feeling optimistic, uh, uh, watching the Giants, the whole organization has, like, done a 180. Like, I'm looking at all the minor league systems. Like, this guy's getting elevated. and Matos looks good. And now we're seeing Casey Schmidt and Patrick Bailey, even though he's not even – I don't even think he's even close to being ready when it comes to the bat and whatnot. But the glove is clearly there, and I'm feeling great about him organizationally, seeing some of these young guys come through after hearing about them for years and years and years, it just feels like the whole temperature of the team has done a 180. Do you feel that too? Oh, for sure. I think everybody feels that. I, the, whatever happened last year, you know, it, we watched it in the big leagues where the Giants were just off a tick. You know, they weren't a bad team. They were a 500 team, uh, but they just weren't right but it really happened in the minor leagues last year, and nobody could figure out why. Like, everybody underperformed. Uh, there were tons of injuries, and it, it did. It cast a pall over everything. Because the Giants, this whole thing, all the angst from Giants fans these last few years, I think has stemmed from one decision, and that is when Farhan was hired, Farhan decided we're not tanking. We're not doing it. We're going to try to compete while we build up our farm system. and But there's two parts to that. They didn't tank, and then we got 2021 out of it, which was an amazing, joyful season. Mm. But then the other part of the plan last year really went off the rails. Yeah. And it's, it's back on now. And that's, this has been the plan all along, which is to try to compete while you might have to you know, mix and match and use some patchwork stuff with some shorter term free agents. But, you know, while we build that farm system and the Giants have been heavily criticized for that to me unfairly, because that's the way you do it. If you're going to do both at the same time, you're going to have to use aspects of both. Uh, But the whole thing is predicated on the minor league system doing its thing. And the guys who are here, 
You mentioned the names. I mean, we're going to see Luis Matos this year in the big leagues. We are. Wow. He's been, wow. He's been the, he's 21 years old. He's about the youngest player in AAA. He's running all over the place. He's diving and making catches in the outfield. He is a premium defensive center fielder who has flipped the switch offensively. Will we see Kyle Harrison, Flynn? We are going to see Kyle Harrison in the big leagues. Last night, Kyle had four uh, one-hit innings with nine strikeouts, and I think 13 swings and misses on his fastball alone in about 70 pitches. Uh, Kyle Harrison, if he's in the strike zone, is a upper-level major league quality arm. Uh, I'll give you a couple other names from yeah, yeah. minor leagues uh, while we're talking about it. Uh, Carson Wisenhunt mm. was the Giants' second pick last year. He is bum garnering the minor leagues right now. Nobody, nobody can touch this guy in a ball. He's already jumped up a level. This is his first pro season. Uh, he has hardly given up a base runner. Like nobody can touch him, and he is on the massive fast track. Carson Wisenhunt has a plus plus, uh, you know, whatever nickname you want to give it, Bugs Bunny changeup, uh, you know, pick your favorite. He's got an unbelievable changeup, and minor league hitters have no chance against it. Yeah, that's not to say he's going to come up and immediately do this at the big league level, but for a guy who was drafted last year, you're going to see him sooner rather than later. And the other guy that should be on the radar, and I'm not saying it's likely that this year he will be here, but the Giants' first round pick last year was a guy named Reggie Crawford. Oh yes, he was yeah. hurt. I saw the he video hurt. yesterday. He, yeah, he, you know he was running. Uh, he was coming back from Tommy John surgery as the Giants drafted him. So it's been a slow climb back. He's throwing one hundred and one from the left side oh, now. Oh my god! And so he's in San Jose. His arm is just a massive power arm. Is he going to stay as a Giants, pitcher? He's he's going to do both okay. for San Jose. So while you have a chance, if you're down in the South Bay and you're listening to us, go see Reggie Crawford because I think probably probably a couple times a week he's going to DH or maybe even play first base. He, it, this is still an injury recovery for him, so oh, okay. the Giants are really going to be conservative with his pitch numbers. But the, I, I'm telling you, there is an outside chance with his talent. This guy's got major upside talent. There's a chance that if they slow play him by the end of the year, if they really needed a power arm in the bullpen, if they're in a pennant race, there's a chance you could see Reggie Crawford. So lots of good things going on in the minor leagues right now, but there's more on the way than the than the guys that we've seen already. And there's good things happening at the major league level as the Giants climb back to 500. They've won the first two of this series. They went two or three against the Marlins. They sweep the Phillies. Things are turning around, so a big week for them. Got the Brewers after Minnesota. It'll be very interesting to see what happens when the Giants come back home. Flem, we'll always appreciate the time. We'll do it again next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, Thanks, I Dave. believe. We'll do it again, and we'll uh, pick your brain about some things. You guys will be shocked to know we're going to face Corbin Burns in Milwaukee. Yeah, of I course. mean, it's like this is unbelievable. Of course. The Giants are facing Corbin right. Burns. They nobody could face the one guy more often it's, than the Giants are facing him. And, and coming unreal. off a poor performance too. It's unbelievable. <laughs> coming off we'll a poor see. performance. He got rocked by the Astros the other day, man. So he'll be looking for some get back. Yeah, that stinks. Maybe he's a future giant. Talk to you guys soon. Uh, Dave, right, great info on the minors, man. Yeah, Thank no you doubt. so much. Diana Ross, come on, clean it up. Thank man. you. I know, Flem. I I'm <laughs> terrible, man. Terrible. Terrible. I love that man. Bye.